Hi, I'm Laura, and I'm here with our team lead, Juliana, Paco, Sharon, and Ajoy. And together, we're the team from the CDC and NIH trying to illuminate the tech transfer path. The main goal of technology transfer is to get new inventions out of the laboratory where they are discovered and into the marketplace for the public's benefit. CDC scientists work in a number of vital research areas, making new discoveries to fight public health problems, public health problems like Ebola, dengue, rabies, malaria, and even black mold, to name a few. As you can imagine, our scientists make a huge impact in the world. But the key to getting these federal discoveries out of the lab and to the public is through the steps in the technology transfer process. And that's what we do in our offices. We help scientists work with their invention disclosures. We make evaluations. We market, protect, and license new technologies. Basically, tech transfer is the link that brings new discoveries from the lab to the market for commercialization for the public's benefit. Unfortunately, there are some specific problems our scientists are experiencing making this process more challenging. As a scientist myself, I can tell you that one of our main jobs, including research, is to actually share that knowledge with the public, whether it's through conferences, presenting posters, talks, publishing papers. However, these things could actually hurt our chances of commercializing our research, something not all scientists realize. I know I didn't in the beginning. And in fact, some of the scientists we spoke to didn't know this either. One scientist told us when she first started at the CDC, one of her colleagues actually came into her lab and told her how cool her research was and asked her if she had spoken to the tech transfer office. And she was just like, the who, who, I, what? Tech transfer? She had no idea who we were. So if scientists have no idea that they're supposed to talk to us before they publish or present their findings, they could jeopardize their chances of ever commercializing their hard work. This problem is one that is felt throughout the CDC and NIH. Through our conversations with scientists, we identified that they thought the process itself was confusing. Some of them said the tech transfer office was a mystery. And as I mentioned earlier, they didn't realize that they had to talk to us before publishing or presenting their findings. We also identified that the initial disclosure process was difficult in itself. When they have a new invention, they have to come to our office and fill out this huge form. They thought the form was a beast, that Word documents are really old school, it was redundant and confusing. The third problem we identified that they just wanted to know where their invention was throughout the technology process itself. They had no idea of the status of their inventions. So to solve these three problems, our team built the following prototypes from scratch using free and open source software platforms. Because they thought the tech transfer process was confusing, we piloted an educational cartoon to describe tech transfer basics in a fun and dynamic way. And we made another to create awareness of tech transfer at the CDC. Next, we transformed that visually overwhelming, dated, and confusing invention disclosure form into a sleek and simple online web-based tool that also included an invention tracker. So scientists can now see where their inventions are as they are submitted to our office and how they move through the process of tech transfer. Throughout testing our solutions, we asked inventors what they thought and were, received to, or were pleased to receive lots of positive feedback. For the educational cartoon, scientists thought that it made a boring topic really easy to understand. And some even mentioned that they'd like to have that as training for newcomers joining in the lab. For our tracker and disclosure tool, they thought that it seemed pretty straightforward and easy to use. And some of them really wanted to use it immediately. And they were like, all right, when is this coming out? I have something I have to disclose. When is this going to be on? <laughs> Um, so it's clear that scientists want and need the tools that we created. But as we mentioned earlier, we built these materials from scratch, and we don't have a lot of experience, if any, with these types of efforts. So what do we need to help our scientists? To better serve our scientists and really make use of their groundbreaking research, we need a training expert to help us educate our scientists so that they know their role in the tech transfer process like that they have to come talk to us before disclosing a paper, for example. Also, our scientists mentioned other features that they'd like to see in that web-based tool. For instance, if their technology is being licensed and where. 
So to build new features into the tool, we would really need the, the expertise of a computer programmer to help us do that. And we know that with these two subject matter experts, we can prevent missed opportunities and get inventions out of the lab and help make our scientists make a better impact on the world. Thanks. All right, who wants to go first? I'll ask the question, I'll ask question first. So, um, I love the process. I uh, loved hearing about your journey over the last few months. Um, one of the things you ended up with that you said you heard from scientists is they want to hear from a training expert. Um, and I was curious if you had a chance to dig in who do they consider a training expert? Who would they want to hear from? For instance, uh, would they rather hear from uh, other CDC scientists who had either successfully or unsuccessfully gone through it and they are the, they are the training experts sharing their experience as peers, or are they looking for, what, did you get a chance to hear, who, are they, who, do, who do they consider training experts that they want to hear from? Well, I, I think what we meant by that is really, we just want to talk to somebody who's, who's done training before to audiences, so that we know a little bit more about, you know, what's the best way for us to really reach this audience and, and do it well, and so sit both with our scientists to find out what resonates with them, mm -hmm and somebody who's done this before and said, you know, this is what I've learned in creating educational material so that it actually is used. Okay. So we, and we feel like we can do this perhaps at a very low cost, um, working with people inside the government who've actually said, you know, this is what we think will make some effective training material, mm -hmm. educational material, and here's a process we would suggest that you take so that as you're listening to scientists, you're really targeting uh, the material to what they want and what would resonate with them, so. And so far, 100% of the scientists we interviewed with the educational cartoon said that they like that form of education in addition to having maybe some sort of manual so that they can reference back and forth, so they liked it. So you, oh. made, you made this point earlier to us, which was kind of listening to scientists about what it is, the different things that they're looking for in and how to target that training material appropriately to the things that we're hearing. And so we'd just like to speak to somebody, maybe get somebody on a detail for short term to kind of just give us a little bit more of that subject matter expertise to make sure we're, we're hitting the right notes in the training material. And I don't know if they're still alive, but if you can find the people who did the Schoolhouse Rock and Junction yeah. Junction stuff, yeah, that yeah. stuff stuck with me 40 years, and that's more than the time your CDC yeah. scientists will be at CDC. So. Yeah. Some right. of the scientists said, this reminds me of that. <laughs> so, yeah, so, we, but when we, we did that all ourselves, so we just want maybe yeah. a little bit of, of back and forth with somebody who says, yeah, this is, this is, you know, here's how you can evaluate it and make sure that you're hitting the right notes. Good. So you mentioned looking for a programmer to help find out where the inventions are used and how they're used. Is that more of sort of a very broad net Google mining to see what's happening to it after it goes out? Or do you have sort of structured licensing events that you're evaluating and going into deep detail on? Or, or how are, what, what software are you going to use to well, find out how it's used and the impact? <laughs> so that really is targeted to, um, we're using an open source uh, platform right now, Drupal. And we've just hit a wall where, you know, we, there are some technical issues with making sure that we're hit, you know, we're, we're um, aligned with CDC security, HA, all government security issues. Um, and, um, we chose Drupal because we thought this would be good for others to use as well, since it's open source, uh, different, uh, NIH is using it for something else. We think that it could have uh, traction across HHS as a tool that others could build upon once we get kind of a basic structure in place. But we have to have the security issues taken care of. So it's really just that piece right now that we're looking for, um, uh, for, for that, that one ask. I have a couple of more fundamental questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little surprised to see that this is a project of CDC. Uh, NIH has an entire institute dedicated to doing this kind of thing. Are they missing something, and do we need to reinvent this wheel? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, well, so CDC and NIH work together on CDC's tech transfer program. So we are embedded as a part of NIH, and NIH obviously has a bigger activity in technology transfer. Um, but it still remains a very bureaucratic process, and we're actually hoping that by 
um, working with NIH that perhaps they too can adopt some of the tools that we are using. But no, this stemmed from uh, CDC originally uh, as a, a w as a response to what we were hearing from scientists, which is this is an overly confusing process, um, and we'd like you know we'd like some simplicity to this. Well, that takes takes me to my second question. Sure. The notion of turning ideas into money is not something that we invented in the government. Right. Um, it is the driver of most private sector activities, whether it's technology companies or drug companies or consumer products country, companies. It goes on all the time. Mm -hmm. Have we gone out there to see how do they do it and mm -hmm. why do they do it so much better than we do? We've, we've certainly talked to a lot of people outside of the government. Um, a lot of the big academic institutions that have really big blockbuster uh, technologies. Um, we haven't talked to sort of the private sector per se, other than some of the companies that do some of the uh, tech transfer management systems um, and talk to them about some of their systems that they have in place. But we have not talked to the industry side. Seems to me that we ought to be talking to the people who actually do this effectively and make a lot of money at it. I, I wouldn't go to an academic institution for this kind of information. I'd go to a company that develops ideas commercializes them and makes money. Yeah, you know, Ned, that, that's an interesting idea. I mean, the fundament, there, there's sort of a fundamental difference in culture in that the researchers at academic institutions and in government tend to be more focused on the sort of, you know, the, the, the research itself rather than the potential uh, commercial uh, results of that research, mm -hmm. whereas in the private sector, the researchers are theoretically focused on the potential commercial results. But your point is a good one, um, and one that uh, actually we might be well suited to, to look into. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And I think with that, we are out of time. Sure. I'm getting this going crossbound, so thank you very much.